Let's continue. Yeah, so this other question was also one of the exercises which I gave you, which says determine the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the pin and its direction measured clockwise from the positive X axis. So this one is a very simple question. Yeah, so it doesn't even need you to think because you just, you have all the components. This is actually a physics question. It's not a, it's not a question that we can call uh, it's uh, in second year engineering. It's, it's just normal physics, first year physics. So what you just need to find are the components of these forces. So you can either use the Cartesian, um, you, can, you can either use vectors or if you don't want to use vectors, you can use uh, the normal, the normal uh, scalar components, uh, components that we know. So we find the, the forces, the summation of forces in the X, and then we also find the summation of forces in the Y. So let me write them down. So summation of forces in the X will therefore be, so we get the X components of uh, 30 pounds. So the X components of 30 pounds, we have 30 um, cos 45, because if we draw a triangle here, means that we're going to move like this. We're moving towards the positive X and positive Y. So we're going to have 30 uh, cos 45, for the X component of uh, 30 Newtons there. 30 cos 45, then you are also having this other, um, this other one which is also moving towards the uh, positive axis, X axis and then goes down there, which is for F2. And then it's moving towards the positive X axis. So we have uh, 40 cos 15 degrees. And then we also have another one which is this one. So it also goes first to the positive X axis and then goes down. So we, oh, sorry, the angle is this side. So we have to move along the Y like that. And then we go like that. So this is going to be the, um, the opposite. The X axis is going to be the opposite to this angle. So in using Sokatoa, Sokatoa, using Sokatoa, we can uh, simply just find, we, we can check that the one which deals with the hypotenuse and the opposite is simply just sine. So we know that sine 15 degrees will therefore be equal to, uh, sine 15 degrees is going to be equal to uh, the opposite. The opposite is what? Is the X component that we want. So. Uh, so I'll just say X over um, the, 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 uh, the hypotenuse there is what? 25. So to find X, you're simply just going to cross multiply. So this would be 25 sine what? Sine 15. So we have uh, uh, 25 positive 25 sine 15 degrees. So this is what we're going to have in the X. We need to calculate that. Then we also need to find the summation of forces in the Y. So the summation of forces in the Y, we start with this one. So this one, the Y is moving like that, which is moving towards the positive Y. And this is going to be uh, 30. And because it's opposite to this angle, we are using sine. So we say sine 45 degrees. And then uh, for this one, we are going towards the negative Y. So we say, um, so we say a negative, uh, 40, and then opposite, the, the, the one since the Y is opposite to 15 degrees, so use sine. So negative 40 sine, 15 degrees, and then we move on to this one. This one is also going towards the negative Y, and if you check, uh, this side is adjacent to the angle 15 degrees here. So what that means is that we are going to use cos. So we still have negative but we are using cos, so this would be 25 cos 15 degrees. And this is going to be found this side. So the first, the first one, the summation of forces in the X, we have 30 uh, cos 45, and then plus uh, 40 uh, cos 15. And then you also have another plus, uh, 25 
psi 15. And this gives us 6.32. So we have 6.32 uh, pounds. And then we move on to the summation of forces in the Y. So we have 30 uh, sine 45. Then we have plus, or oh, sorry, minus. So we have minus uh, 40 sine 15. Then we have another minus 25 cos 15. And the angle, uh, rather, and the, the magnitude here is negative 13 point eight eight negative thirteen point eight eight pounds. So after finding this, the next thing that we have been asked to find, I mean, we've been asked to find the resultant. So to find the resultant, F R is given by the square root of all the summation of forces in the X squared plus the summation of forces in the Y squared. So the, the resultant is therefore going to be, um, it's going to be um, the square root of what? Uh, it's the 6.32 squared and then plus negative 13.88 squared. So this is what we have. So we square that and we find the square root of the answer. So after finding that, I mean, the solution, the final answer, which is the magnitude of the resultant force is simply just, it's the 7.64 pounds. So this is the magnitude of the resultant force, but how do we find the direction? So the direction is simply just the cost inverse of, um, the force in the, the, the summation of forces in the Y over the summation of forces in the X. So theta will therefore be equal to, we have cos inverse of um, summation of forces in the Y is simply just uh, negative 13.88, then everything, oh, sorry, I was supposed to use tan here, tan inverse. Okay, so tan inverse of that, then we have the X component there is 66.32. So we divide 13.88 by 66.32. Then you find the turn inverse of that. So the turn inverse is therefore going to be um, 11.8. So it's going to be negative 11.8. Negative 11.8 degrees. So the way you find uh, the angle is, I mean, the question is saying, and its direction measured clockwise from the positive uh, X axis, clockwise. So clockwise direction is this, is this direction. So if they said anti-clockwise we would have subtracted this from 360. I mean, we would have found the angle that is this side, but in this case, they are saying measured, um, the direction measured clockwise. So uh, it's this side, okay. So that is the angle that we've been asked to find. So we proceed to the next, um, the next question. <clears throat> 